Okay, welcome everyone. As we learn the Chak Yisrael for uh, Pashas Truma Yom Chamishi, Day 5, Be'ezra Hashem Yisbach. V'na'adati l'chosham, and I will meet with you there, says Hashem. V'dibarti itcha me'ala kapiris, and I will speak to you from above the ark over, mi'bein shnei akruvim, emanating from between the two uh, kruvim, asher al aron ha'edus, which is on top of the aron, uh, which contains the taira, eiskol asher atzava oischa, and I will speak all that I, I command to you, El Bnei Yisrael, to teach the Bnei Yisrael. The Eizamen Memri Loch Tamon, the Emalel Imoch Me Ilvei Kapurta, me Bein Trei Kruvaya Di Alaroina De Sadusa, Yas Kol Di Afake Di Osoch Levas Bnei Yisrael. Says Rashi, Vinu Aditi Kishe Ekfa Moye Loch Ledaber Imoch. When I make a meeting with you to speak to you, that place, uh, the Arn in the Kaddish Kadashim, will be the place of meeting. That I will come there to speak with you. So now, Rashi tells us that there seems to be a contradiction in the Psukim. From the oil mayid speaking, the oil mayid is the kaidish. This is the kaidish uh, outside of the curtain. Was it in the kaidish kadashim or was it in the kaidish? So Bach, Kasav Shlishi, a third pasuk comes Bechriya Beinayim and issues a compromise. So Bavay Moshe al Oyel Mayid, when Moshe comes into the Mishkan, into the Kaidish, Vayishma as a Kol, and he will hear the voice Midabre Love Meala Kapiris. He will hear the voice coming from the Ark cover from between the Kruvin. Moshe and Nicholas the Mishkan. Thus Moshe entered into the Mishkan. They came in Shabbat Teicha Pesach when he entered inside the Kaidish. Kel Yerid Min Hashemayim Lubein Akruvim. A voice came down from heaven, uh, emanating from between the two angelic uh, Kruvim. Umisham Yaitzi, and from there it went out. V'Nishma LaMoshe BaEil Maid, and was heard by Moshe Rabbeinu in the Oil Maid. Now this is a real fascinating thing. Uh, if you see in Rashi, he has a vav, the s. Now in our text in the Chumash, there is no vav. vav zu utveila. This uh, vav is extra. It's not re- needed, and it's uh, secondary to the verse. The Sibsei Chacham says that uh, in Rashi's Torah there was a vav here. There is uh, uh, many examples of what would seem to be an unnecessary vav. The koti pasar, and so you should interpret it. The es asher idaber im chosham, and that which I will speak to you there, es kol asher atzavo yisrael bnei yisraelu. It is that which I will want you to instruct the bnei yisrael. Vosiz a shulchan, and then you should make a table in the Kaidish, atzei shitim from acacia wood, am a saim arkut, two amas long, the am a rough boy, and am a wide, the am a vachetzi kamas, and an am a and a half tall. The savi pasora de oin shitim of oi shitim, tartan am an urke, the am so pussy of am so falgarumye, says Rashi kamas, the height includes goiva raglov, the height of the feet, im uve ashulchan, with the thickness of the table. Vitsipis oi says of taran, you should coat it with pure gold, vasisa loi zers of saviv, and you should make a crown around it, that will be the keser malchus. Vasisa the sachve yosei the hav the chay the savet le der the the hav schor schor zer zahab says Rashi similarly keser malchus it's a sign of the crown of kingship shashulchan because a table shame oisher ugedula has a name of wealth and greatness like we say k'moisha imrim shulchan manachim a royal table now they made says the pasuk vasisa le mizkeres 
and they made a rim toifach saviv. They 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 made a rim which measured a tefach roundabout. Uh, Vasisa Zerzov and the, the crown that we talked about, the golden crown, was made Lemisgartoi for this border Saviv, the for this rim roundabout. Vasavid Le Gidafno Rume Pushka Skar Skar Vasave Der Dadav Gidanfe Skar Skar. Says Rashi, this Misgeres is subject to controversy. Misreg Misgeres Kitarguma Gidanfo. It's a rim. If this rim of tefach sat on top of the table or underneath the table, it was above, saviv l'shulchan, around the table, k'moy l'vazvazin, like rims, shebesvaz shulchan sarm, that's at the edge of the tables of nobles. V'yeshayim l'mata hoisa tekua, it was below, going merega l'rego, from one foot to the other, ba'arba ruches ha-shulchan, on the four sides of the shulchan, v'daf ha-shulchan shoychev al oisa misgeres, and the, the board of the table rested on that border. V'asisa zer zav l'miskate, says Rashi, this is not another crown. Hu zer ha'am l'mal, this is the crown mentioned above, u'pirish l'achan she'ala miskeres ha'isa, it was on top of the rim. And now in Malachim, we continue talking about Shlomo HaMelech's building of the temple. Vayiven as Kirei Sabayis. Now, remember, the, the, the walls of the temple were made out of rock. They uh, layered on, on the rock inside. Vayiven as Kirei Sabayis, Mibaisa, and they coated the walls of the house on its interior Bitsalois arozim with planks of cedar, mikar kabayis from the floor ad kiros hasipon until the ceiling, tzipa eis miboyis coating it with wood on the interior, vayitzafes hakar kabayis and they also covered the floor of the house bitsalois beroshim with planks of cypress, even as esem arma miyarkes abayis and they. Uh, built the 20 amas from the back wall of the house with salois arozim with uh, planks of cedar minakarka adakiros from the ground until the, the ceiling by even like mibayis ledvir and this was uh, built on the interior for the lekodesh hakadoshim and went up till the partition which was called the amatraskin uh, and that made up the holy of holies ba'abon ba'amahoya abayis and then there were another 40 amas, which was the uh, rest of the temple. This was the Kaidish uh, uh, that went uh, in the front. The Erez El Habayis Pnima and the uh, cedar, which was in the interior of the house, Miklas Pikoim, was made with. Uh, uh, the decorations of kaftorim, uh, of types of discs, and blooming flowers, hakol erez, it was all coated with cedar, ain't even nearer, no stone was seen. Udavir b'seich habayis mipnima, and the Kurdish Kadoshim uh, inside towards the interior of the house, within, heichen was prepared, this was within the Amatraskin, within the partition, L'sitein Sham, to place there, as Aroin Bris Hashem, the Aron HaKodesh, the Aron HaEdis of the Covenant of Hashem. Shem HaMelech tells us, Bechol Eis Ohev Horeya. At all times, you should have friends that you show love to. You should be a loyal friend and, and foster for yourself Good friends, the The consequence is, is you will have like a brother to assist you and comfort you and be there for you in times of distress. Adam chasar lev, a person that lacks intelligence, toykea kaf stretches his hand in an agreement. Uh, to be orev aruba lifnei re'ehu, to be a guarantor 
for his friend's uh, loan. And this is a person who does this without thinking because it's very possible that his friend will uh, fail on the loan and then the creditor will come and collect from him and he won't have the money. Now, Rashi tells us that this is actually a uh, allegory for a person who uh, stretches his ha hand and makes a pact with a min, with a heretic, to follow his idolatry when he already has a pact with the Rabbi Nishalayim. Oyev Pesha, one loves sin if Oyev Matzah, if he loves strife. There are people that, they live for a fight. But you should know such a person loves sin because this is going to cause him machloikis uh, and Lashin Hara and Rechilis and revealing secrets and lying and hatred and Nekama. Magvia Piskoi, one who keeps his door very high, that means he's very arrogant and haughty and towers above people, Mavake Shover, he is uh, asking to be broken. Ike Shlev, one who has a crooked heart, Lo Yim will not find good, because good is when somebody has Seichel Yosher, straight way of thinking. One who thinks crookedly will not find good, and if he has a, a contrary uh, tongue, that means he speaks the opposite of the truth, Yipol Bara will fall in an evil way. Yoilid Ksil Lesuga, one who uh, has a child and raises him to be a fool, he doesn't watch that he should study properly and uh, learn from the right people, he's just uh, preparing himself grief. It'll be grief to him. And one who is the father of a person who is a lowlife, a novel, he does things of novella, of a, 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 li lives in an obscene way, will not bring his father happiness. And now we learn from the fifth parak of Menachis, Kala Menachis Bois Matzah, generally all Menachis are supposed to be unleavened with two exceptions. Chutz mechamet shebetayda, the Thanksgiving offering is, is accompanied with 40 loaves. 30 of them are unleavened and 10 of them are leavened. Ushte alechem, and the two loaves of shvuas that accompany the kifse atzeres, that accompany the, the uh, lambs of shvuas, those have to be chametz. Shehein is chametz, they are brought from chametz. Now the question is, how do you make them chametz? How do you make them leavened? Rameir, I mean, Rameir says, uh, you measure out, because we, need, we know that the amount of the, uh, of the mincha is an asiris or eifa. So you measure out an asiris or eifa, a flour, and so'or bodeh lohem mitoichan, you take from that flour, add water, let it ferment, and then put it back in the rest of the flour. So, or bodelem he makes sourdough from the flour itself, then introduces it back, umechamtsen, and it makes the rest of it chamts. Rabbi Yudai, Rabbi Yudai says, afhi ena minamufcha. That's not the preferred way. Uh, Rabbi Huda holds that if he does this, it, since this is not pure sourdough, it won't really good a, do a good job of fermenting the dough. Elamevi SSR, he brings a, a qualified si sourdough, venoisin lesechamida, and he puts it in the measuring vessel of an isarin, umamali esamida, and then he fills the rest of it around it with flour. Amrulai, so he tells him, since that sourdough has introduced with it water, Sometimes it's more dense, and therefore it would turn out to be more than an Asiris Eifa. Sometimes it's less dense, and it would be less than an Asiris Eifa. Kala Menachis, all Menachis, Niloi Sheis are needed with lukewarm water, because if they're needed with boiling water, it scalds it, and it's not supposed to be scalded, and if it's needed with cold water, it'll make it crumbly. And you have to guard it that it doesn't become chametz. That means you have to work with it often and, of course, bake it before 18 minutes. And even if after you take the chametz, 
you allow the re- remaining part of the mincha to become chametz over beloisase. You transgress one of the negative prohibitions in the Torah. Shenema kol mincha she takriv la Hashem. All meal offerings that are offered to Hashem lo say ase chametz cannot be made chametz. V'chayovim ali shasa in the event that it becomes chametz when you need it because you didn't work it properly. Uh, you're chayiv alav. If when you need it, it becomes chametz. Or valeri chasa, even if it's already chametz, if you braid it after it's chametz, valafiyasa, or you bake it after it's chametz, you're also over a lav. Now there are some menachos that are need oil, some need frankincense, some need both, and some have neither. So the Mishnah tells us yesh tu unai shem there are menachas that need to be accompanied by oil and frankincense. Some shemen v'loi levana, some oil and not frankincense. Some levona v'loi shemen, some frankincense and no oil. And there are those that loi shemen v'loi levana, are not accompanied with neither oil nor frankincense. Ve'elu t'unai shemen v'loi the following need both oil and frankincense. Mincha sasoilis, a mincha of fine flour. Vamachbas made in a griddle, vamacheshes deep fried, vachalos loaves, barakikin wafers, minchas kahanim, the mincha of a kayim which is uh, burnt entirely, minchas kayim mashiach, the mincha of the kayim gadol which is offered half in the morning, half in the afternoon, minchas kayim, the mincha brought by a guy, minchas nashim, the mincha brought by women, or minchas aimer, the mincha of the aimer brought on the 16th of uh, Pesach. These are all accompanied by both shemen and levona, oil and frankincense. Says the Mishnah, Minchas Nesachim, the meal offering that accompanies libations, tuna shemen, it necessitates oil, and tuna levona, it doesn't necessitate frankincense. Lechem upon him, the showbread brought on, from Shabbos to Shabbos, ton levona needs frankincense, or ain't ton shemen, it doesn't need oil. Shtea lechem, the two loaves that are brought with the kifse atzeres on Shavuos, minchas chayte, a mincha brought by a sinner, or minchas kanais, and the mincha of a saita, loy shem and loy levayna doesn't have oil nor frankincense. The chayiv ala shem and bifnei the din is that in a minchas chayte, that's supposed to be a poor mincha without oil or frankincense, he's chayiv malchus if he introduces oil, or if he introduces frankincense. If he introduces oil, psala, he disqualifies it. If he introduces frankincense, he doesn't disqualify it. You could gather it off. If he introduces oil on the remnants, that doesn't uh, involve a lav. The lav is only when you put it on what uh, you take the kamitza from. Nasan kli al gabe kli, if you put on top of the mincha a keli, another keli that holds oil, or another keli that holds frankincense, like psala, you don't disqualify it, it's only if you introduce it into the mincha itself. Now, yesh tunis hagasha, there are certain minchas that you have to take it and bring it to touch the southwestern corner of the Mizbeach, but they don't have to be waved. There are those that need Tunufa, they have to be waved, but they don't have to be brought to the southwestern corner. There are those that need both bringing to the southwestern corner and to be waved. And then there are those that like Tunufa, that don't, they're not waved, and they're not brought to the southwestern corner. Elu tunas hagoshes vein tuna tunu for the following need to be brought to the southwestern corner, but they not not waved. Minchas hasaylus, the mincha fine flour, vamachbas, the mincha of the griddle, vamacheshes, the mincha that's deep fried, vachalas, the loaves, were kick in the wafers. Minchas kahan, the mincha of kahan, minchas kain, mashir, the mincha of the kain gadol, minchas kain, the mincha of a guy, minchas nash, mincha of women, and minchas chayte, the mincha of a sinner. Reb Shimon, I'm a minchas kahanim and minchas kain mashiach, the mincha of a kain and minchas kain mashiach. Since we don't take a kmitza from them, they're completely burnt. Ain by my gosh, there's no bringing it to the southwestern corner. Mibnaisha, ain by kmitza, since there's no kmitza, the kol shain by kmitza, since we don't take a handful from it, ain by my gosh, there's no mitzvah of agosh. Elu to unim tnufa, the ain tun in agosh, the following need to be waved 
but they're not brought to the southwestern corner. Loig Shemen Shal Mitzari, the loig of oil of the biblical leper, Vashamai, and his guilt offering, that's waived, but it's not brought to the southwestern corner. Vabikurim, and the first fruits, before they put it before the Mizbeach, before it's put before the Mizbeach, Kedivrei Rebeliezer ben Yaakov. Veimurei Shalmei Yochid, the sacrificial portions of a private peace offering, uh, the sacrificial portions are the uh, ki- kidneys and the lobe of the liver and the fats, because of a shaykh shalahem and the breast and the shank, which go to the kayin, they have to be waved. Echad anashim v'echad nashim, both of a carbon of man and a carbon of woman. Be Yisrael, this is true uh, by a Yisrael, uh, by a male Jew, avaloi b'acherim but not if it's a female. A female, it's still waved, but the female doesn't wave it together with the kayin. It's only waved by the kayin. Ushte alechem, and the two loaves that are brought on shvus, ushnei kipsei atzeres, together with the two lambs of shvus. Now, how do you do that with the shte alechem and the kipsei atzeres? How do you wave them? He takes the two loaves and puts it on the side of the two lambs. And he puts his two hands underneath them. He waves them in all four directions. And up and down. Which is waved. And which is lifted. The, the Tnufa could be even on the east, but the Agosha has to be, as I said, on the southwestern corner. The waving comes before the bringing it nigh. Minchas Aimer, Minchas Kanais, the Mincha of the Aimer on the 16th of Nisan, and the Minchas Sait, the Tunas Tnufa of Agosha, they are both waved and also brought near the Mizbah. Lechem upon the showbread, or Minchas Nesachem, and the libations, the Mincha of the libations, Loi Tnufa of Loi Agosha, there is no waving, and there is no bringing it nigh to the Mizbah. Reb Shimon Aimer, Shleishiminim, three varieties. Of three varieties, of three species, to unim shalosh mitzvahs, need a variety of three mitzvahs. None of them need all three. Shtayim bekolachas vachas. Each of these need two of the three. Vashlish is No, No one of these uh, types need all three. Ve'eluhain, what are the three minim here? Zivche shalme yachid, the sacrifices of a personal peace offering, v'zivchei shalmei tzibur, a public shlama, which is only the kipsi atzeres, v'ashim metzairah, and the guilt offering of the metzairah. And the breakdown is as follows. Zivchei shalmei yachet, private shlamim, tunin smicha chaim, you wave them when the animals are alive, utnufa shchutim, excuse me, tunin smicha chaim, you lean on them, uh, beforehand, the mitzvah of svicha, leaning between the horns with all your might, or tnufa shkutim, but and they're waved only after they're slaughtered. They're not waved alive. They aim by tnufa chaim. So you have the two of the three, smicha, and waving it when it's slaughtered. Zivchei shalme tzibur tunin tnufa chaim shkutim. It needs to be waved both alive and slaughtered. But they aim by smicha. You don't lean on them. Vashim mitzayra, the guilt offering of the mitzayra. You have to lean on it and wave it while it's live, but you don't wave it when it's slaughtered. Let's say Shelly says, I accept upon myself a mincha of the griddle. He can't bring a mincha that's deep fried. If he says, I accept myself a mincha of deep fried, he can't bring a mincha of the griddle. What's the difference between the griddle and the deep fryer? The one that's deep fried has a cover. The one that's griddle ain't like kisli. It's not made uh, with a cover. It's deep fried. And therefore, since it's a, an oil, it's uh, cake like moves because it's spongy. But the, the griddle is flat, and therefore its uh, a produce is uh, hard and it's not spongy. 
Ha'imer hari alai betaner, as we learn the final Mishnah of this parak. Ha'imer hari alai betaner. If somebody says, "I accept upon myself to bring a mincha in an oven," lo yavi mafe kufa. Kufa is a much more narrow and small oven. Or mafe rafim, he can't bake it on a, a heated tile. Or mafe yaris arvim, or he can't bake it in a hole in the ground like the Arabians do, coated with clay and it's heated up because that's not. An oven. Rabbi Yudai, Rabbi Yudai says, Imratza Yavi Mafe Kupach. If he says Minchas Taner, he could even bring a Kupach because a Kupach is just a smaller oven. Hari Alai Minchas Mafe, if he says that he's bringing a Mincha that's baked, Lo Yavi Mechza Chalz Mechza Rikikin. He can't bring half loaves and half wafers, but he has to bring either all loaves or all wafers. Rabbi Shimon Mati, Rabbi Shimon says, listen, he says an oven. An oven is both loaves and wafers, so he can bring half and half. It's one type of carbon, so he can bring half loaves and half wafers. So now we learn from a famous Gemara in Menachas that talks about the mitzvah of tzitzis. Tanya Idah, Uriisim Aisai, as we say in Krishma, and you should see it. Uzachartem es kol mitzvah Hashem. And remember all the mitzvahs. Shkula mitzvah zu, keneged kala mitzvah kulam. This mitzvah is equal to all the mitzvahs. That's why we say. Tzitzis is Begmatria 600 together with the five knots and eight threads. It's 613. You see it, you remember, and you will perform. When you see them, you'll remember the mitzvahs, and Zachir remember them in the mitzvahs, will uh, bring you to perform the mitzvahs. Rab Shim ben Yechayah, I mekala zoriz be mitzvah zu, whoever is careful with the mitzvah of sitzes, zaycha mekabo pnei shchena, will merit to greet the shchena. Ksiv hacha reisim aisai, o ksiv hasim, also using the term reia, es Hashem alechecha tira, you should fear God, va oisai savit, and you will serve him. Rab Leaz ben Yaakov, I mekol sheyesh like tefillin b'raisha, whoever has tefillin on his head, or tefillin b'zray, tefillin on his arm, but tzitzis b'bigday, and tzitzis on his garment, or mezuzah b'pischa, and mezuzah on his door, hakol b'chizik shelo yechate, he could be strengthened that he won't sin, because he has three mitzvahs, the tefillin, the tzitzis, and the mezuzah, it's chuchot b'chot ha-mishulosh, shenema v'chot ha-mishulosh, the triple cord, loy b'meiri yinasek, will not unravel. V'aymer, and it says, chayna malach Hashem, the angel of Hashem camps, savav l'yareyev, around those that fear him and do his mitzvahs, and will deliver him from trouble. Why do we use the tcheles dye, the turquoise, turquoise type of dye, more than any other colors? Because the tcheles is similar to the sea. The yom daimel rakia and the ski is sim- sea is similar to the sky. The rakia lekisei akovin and the sky is similar to the throne of glory, and therefore we remind you of the throne of glory. How do we know that the throne of glory has a bluish color? Shenem of asacha raglav beneath Hashem's feet kaviyakol kameisa livnas asafer is like a sapphire brick, sapphire being a bluish color. Okay, etzem hashemayim and like the color of uh, s- sky, letter, when the sky is pure. Uksiv kamari even sapir, like the appearance of a sapphire, demus kise is the form of the kise I covet. Tanya remei raimer, gadol einshe shalov and yaisim einshe shal It's much more serious if a person doesn't have white tzitzis than if he's missing the blue. Mashalama davidam, because the, the white tzitzis is much more accessible. What could this be compared to? The Melch Bas of Adam, to a human king, Shamal Shnei Avadav, he told his two servants, Le'echad Amar, one he said, Havali Chaisim Shal Tit, bring me a signet of clay. Le'echad Amar, Havali Chaisim Shal Zav, bring me a signet of gold. O Pasha Shnei and Velayavi, both of them were derelict and didn't bring it. Who is he going to blame more? Ezimam Einshim Aruba, who is going to be more punished? Obviously, Avi Aimez Esh Amalei Havali Chaisim Shel Tit. When he told him, "Bring me a signet of clay," Velay Havi, since this is much more accessible, he will be more greatly punished. Tanya, how you're a mayor? I'm a chayiv on levarch mayor brachas bechol yom. A person should say a hundred blessings every day. Shenem of Ati Yisrael, and now Yisrael, Ma Hashem lekech Hashayom Miach. What does Hashem ask? But that you should yira, that you should fear Him. And we say, Al Tikri Ma Elamea, don't read it Ma, but Maya a hundred. 
and as Rav Miller explains, if a person, there was a clown called Bozo the Clown. Rav Miller said, if a person says Bozo a hundred times a day, pass the Bozo. Looks like Bozo. Oh, I think I saw Bozo. At the end of the night, he's thinking about Bozo. So if a person says a hundred blessings, we kavana shalei asani goy baruch atah Hashem reifik obasa baruch atah Hashem chonei nadas baruch atah Hashem shemei atil tefila baruch atah Hashem sheakol mir bedvaro. By the end of the day, if he thinks about Hashem a hundred times, he becomes a yoy shemayim. Rav Chia b'reder of Avia b'shabso b'yomi tovi. Rav Chia, the son of Rav Avia, on Shabbos and Yom Tov, Torah u'mamali l'hu b'is parmake o megade. He, he tries to fill, because normally we have, with the three Shman Esrei's, we have 57 brachas. On Shabbos, we have four Shman Esrei's, but it's only at 28 brachas. And if you calculate it out, on Shabbos, you're really missing 18 brachas. So, Rav Chia, Breder, Rav Avya would fill them up by smelling and making bari mine besamim and eating delicacies, right? He'll have a cashew that's an eitz and a peanut that's adama and, 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 and a licorice that's a shahakal and he'll have a mazainus and then make an alamichya and a bari nefashis, right? And, and he'll smell some besamim. There's a great story from the Baba Rebbe that he was once, Reb Shleiman Mababav, that he was once in London, he was by somebody's house and uh, he told the host that he's going to come and he's going to have a snack. At the end, he declined to have the snack, and the host was worried. You know, maybe, maybe it wasn't kosher enough, maybe he did something wrong. So the Baba Rebbe smiled. No, he was missing two brachas, but they gave him an Ali in shul, so he got two more brachas, so he didn't have to take the snack. Uh, and now we learn a very interesting zayah, Zaya over here tells us what's involved when a person sits down and eats a meal. And in his eating of a meal, where he uh, says some divrei taira, and he makes sure to set aside some money for the poor, uh, he is actually uh, bringing together the shechina and kuchberichu. It's really a wonderful opportunity Pasachahu Ravya, and this is uh, discussing that uh, the son of Rav Safra was saying over uh, secrets before Rabbi Yaisi and Rabbi Chia. So Pasachahu Ravya, the Birchas Mizaina, when we make a bracha on food, the Amar, Kos of Echadaima, one Pasach says, Viachalta Lufne Hashem Alekecha, and you will eat before Hashem your God. Because of Echad Aimer, and one Pasuk says, V'samachta l'fnei Hashem alikecha. You will rejoice before Hashem your God. So he said, look, Hani Kroi, Kad Yisrael Avishron Ba'ar Kadisha, these Pesukim, when Klal Yisrael were living in Eretz Yisrael, the Holy Land, V'schazun Kamei Kutsu Berichu B'Bei Makdusha, and they appeared before Hashem in the Beis Amigdash, and they ate the Kachim, Hava Miskaime, then it was fulfilled, because uh, this simcha with eating basic kachim, and they ate it in 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 Yerushalayim, Akedish, and Kedish Kedoshim in the Azara. So it was l'fnei Hashem alikecha. But hash the heich miskaime. How could it be fulfilled? Man yochel lemeicha l'fnei Hashem. How could one's eating a hamburger be considered l'fnei Hashem? Ulemechte l'fnei Hashem, and to rejoice before Hashem. Elavadi hachihu. The way it works is as follows. Definitely the way it works is as follows. Bikad Mesa, at first, Kad Yosef Bar Nosh Al Psori Lamechel, when a person sits down by his table to eat, Mivorech Al Nama, he makes a brach on the bread of Amoitzi Lechem Minaritz. Now, first of all, we want to know why is there a Hei Ayadiyah, Hamoitzi? My time, Hamoitzi, Veloy Moitzi. Because many times we have it without the Hei Ayadiyah. It doesn't say It doesn't say It doesn't say My time So the Zayar is going to tell us a fascinating thing that that which emanates from the very holy and secret source of the upper heavens from the Chachma of Bina, what's called 
the Bechina of Bina, that's beyond our understanding. And therefore, since it's hidden, it's without the hay. Elakol milin de inan miraza de omi ilah. Anything that comes from the secret of the upper world, stira, which is hidden, is statra hay mitamon. The hay is removed. Le iskaza to show the homi alma geniza ususira iu. This is from the uh, secret and hidden world. The kol milan de inan mi alma tata. And whatever is from the world below, the Eskalya, uh, the Eskalya Yata, which is more revealed, Ksiv Behe. And it could be, the Gemara Menachah says, Ki Bikar Hashem Tzurei Laman, with Yud Hey, Hashem created the two worlds. And the Gemara says that this world is created with a Hey. Ela told the Shabbat Vats, Behe Baram, Behe Baram. And therefore, that which emanates from the world below, it has a hey. If I might see b'mis b'atzvon, he takes out with in with number his hosts. Hakorei l'me ayam. He calls to the uh, waters of the sea. So there, this is that which emanates from below that has a hey. Kula meraza de alma tatoiu. These are all from that which is below. The e ichtev b'shma iu behe. Now, what if, sometimes it says with the name of Hashem, Ahay, Kigain Hakel Agadol. So here it accompanies the name of Hashem with Ahay. There it's um, because uh, it's telling us uh, that there was Ashpa uh, to, uh, there was Ashpa to Hashem. Below the Shechina, below uh, from Bina, but since it's to the Shechina below, it has a hey. Now, why over here does it have a hey? Vahacha de'iu ba'irach sim. Even though over here, this is uh, our uh, the Shefa of Mazin comes. From the Olam Habina, it's interesting. The Bir Azayah says that the Shefa, the blessing on the fo- food, comes from the Olam Habina, and therefore it really should be without a hay. Because we said if it's from the Olam Habina, it should be uh, without a hay. But may Raza the Olam Tata you. This is from the secrets of the world below, because Kevin the Mavarich Parnash. Because when a person blesses the food, shchinta asya kamei, the shchina, which is here below, comes before him, and therefore we say amoytzi lechem in aretz, because the shchina below attaches itself to kuchiberichu from above. Ah, what? So why we have a fusion over here? We have the the shchina from below, with Hashem Alikecha, that emanates from above. It is included over here to speak Torah while you're learning. This is necessary because the Hashem that comes from the Midas Bina is coming uh, before us because we say learning. The Kaima Dechsev to fulfill that which it says, Now, so, since a person, when he eats, and he says, is standing before his creator, therefore he has to grace the poor to give to them, because this way, just like Hashem is giving to us, we're giving to the poor. Just like Hashem grants him to eat. And then it's as if he's eating before the holy king. You have to be careful not to be a glutton by your table. If a person is gluttonous, that comes from the other side. That's not a shulkan of Hashem. This we find by Esav. 
uh, pour down my throat from this Adoim Adoim Azef, from this red stuff. That's Oirach Balano. That's the way of a glutton. This is needed by the other side. Uksiv, as it says, Uveten Rishon Tefser. The stomach of the wicked is always missing. It's never f- sated. Valdovi achalto lefnei Hashem alikech aksiv. That's why it says you should eat before Hashem. Velo lefnei sitrach, not before the sitrach. The itzrich the lo yisasik b'mila b'teilin. You shouldn't just be involved with uh, a meaningless stuff or b'tzorch etzuda and just the needs of the table. The itzrich lo yisasik b'mila daraisa. But you should speak Taira and thoughts of Musar. Dokad milin daraisa is amoru al psayru. When words of Torah are spoken at the table, yov ha'u barnash took for lamare. A person lends strength to his creator. And now, we learn the musr. And here the musr, we've been talking a lot about humility in the musr. Here the musr shows us there's a linkage between humility and anger. Because a person gets angry when he thinks he knows better. He gets angry when people are not listening to him. He's such a big person. Ashrei mishei nekayes. Fortune is somebody who doesn't get angry. Veruchai nemucha ushvala harba. And his spirit is low. And his spirit is humble and very low. Vecheinu oimer zivchei alihim ruach nishbara. A sacrifice to Hashem is a person that has a broken spirit. Ashrei mi shemarech hakol. It's it's fortunate is a person who is patient with everyone. Right? He has a, a long suffering temperate. V'noise hakol l'ritzayin bayrei, and he is forgiving of everyone. He tolerates everyone uh, to do the will of his Creator. He makes himself like a leftover. Hashem will forgive sin and look away from in, 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 in iniquity. To those of his uh, inheritance that act as leftovers. One who is humble like a leftover. Offer. Fortune is a person who makes himself like earth. That everybody could step on him. He's like the lower threshold. Everybody could step on him. He makes himself like a low peg. Everybody could hang things on. Cass is a uh, subsection of arrogance. Vishokal Kamaisa and as bad as being ar- as bad as being arrogant. Vam Rabbi Sainal Zukran Lavracha, our Rabbi is a blessed memory, say the very scary thing. Kalakais, everybody that gets angry, call me ne pronya shall ganim shaltamai. He will need all the treatments of Ganim. Vam Rabbi Sain is a Kran Lavracha, I'm a Kareya Bigodov. If one rips his clothing, throws around his money, breaks utensils in his anger, he should consider him like an idolater. You shouldn't have a foreign god, and it's referring to anger. Whoever is angry, he doesn't have even uh, recognition of the divine presence. He forgets his learning. It makes him more foolish. His sins are more than his merits. A person who is an angry person, he has a majority of sin. And now we finally, we learn the Rambam, again in Hilchus Kriyashma. Like Kriyashma, not only Kriyashma, any matter of holiness, you're not allowed to speak in the bathhouse, or in the lavatory, even if he says it in English or another uh, language. Not only shouldn't you speak it, even to think in your heart, with words of Torah in the bathroom or in the bathhouse, or in a place which is dirty, a place that has feces, or urine is awesome.
Dvarim shel chal, secular things, mutter l'amram b'loshay na kodesh, you could say even in Hebrew, v'veis ha'kisei in the bathroom, v'chein ha'kinuyim, or even substitutes of Hashem, k'gain rachem mercy, v'nem a trusted one, u'kiyaitze behem, or similar to them, mutter l'amram b'veis ha'kisei. You're allowed to say it in the bathroom. Av Hashem is ham yuchadim, but the uh, distinguished names, the exclusive names, v'em ha'shem ha'shem nem chakim, those names that you're not allowed to erase, uh, like uh, uh, Adonai and Elohim, uh, etc. Also, last give of a base He said you can't mention them in the bathhouse, in the bathroom of base Amerchatz Yashin or a used bathhouse. Vim is damn loy lafrishim and adover also. But if you need to stop a person from doing something also, the base Amerchatz and you're standing in the bathhouse, or the base Akise or in the lavatory, mafrish, you could. Uh, uh, do it to stop a person from sinning. Even if you have to speak in Hebrew, and even if you have to speak learning, in order to stop him from doing the Aveira, you're allowed to stop him. We want to thank you very much for joining us and have a wonderful evening.